Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro says he is alive and victorious after an apparent attempt on his life. It happened during his speech. Several drones armed with explosives flew overhead. At least one detonated. Maduro was unharmed, but seven members of Venezuela's National Guard were injured. Venezuela's Attorney General has ordered an investigation into this apparent assassination attempt. And there's late word tonight that arrests have been made. Maduro is blaming Colombia for this attack. National Security Advisor John Bolton said this morning the U.S. government was not involved in any way and suggested it may have been staged. Now, this brings us to your weekend presidential brief, a segment we bring you every Sunday night, highlighting some of the most pressing national security information the president will need when he wakes up tomorrow. And joining us now is CNN National Security Analyst and former National Security Council Advisor Sam Vinograd. She spent two years in the Obama administration helping to prep for the president's daily brief. So, Sam, President Maduro making a lot of accusations about this reported assassination attempt. Where do you think it's headed? Well, President Maduro said that a shield of love protected him from this assassination attempt. But, Anna, I think he'd be hard-pressed to find any Maduro admirers these days. In light of the fact that conditions in Venezuela are so dire, it should be a rich country. It has abundant oil reserves, but more than half of the population lives in poverty. Hundreds of thousands have fled because of extreme shortages. At the same time, Maduro runs a virtual dictatorship. The administration has sanctioned Maduro and his regime three times because of their abuses of power and their corruption. And Maduro likes to blame everybody else for what's wrong in Venezuela. And in light of this attack, I think he's going to stay true to form, blame the usual suspects, the government of Colombia, the political opposition in Venezuela, even expatriates living in the United States. He wants to shift the blame from his transgressions, point the finger at someone else, and silence the opposition. I mean, not unlike Venezuela, Iran is an oil-rich country, but its economy is also struggling, has been for years. Um, since President Trump withdrew from the Iran deal, we now know U.S. sanctions are set to go back into effect as soon as this week. What can we expect? Well, when President Trump withdrew from the Iran deal, he initiated a two-step process for reimposing sanctions. And the first step will go back into effect tomorrow on things like Iran's ability to purchase dollars, to engage in significant transactions of its own currency. Then in November, the energy sector sanctions come back in. And Iran's own economic mismanagement and the threat of sanctions have really crippled the economy. It grew 12.5 percent when sanctions were lifted in 2016. It's plunged. Its currency is really at an all-time low. Inflation is high. And the regime is really worried about energy revenues going away. So I think they'll protest the sanctions tomorrow verbally and with some shows of force. But they still want to tell the world that they don't deserve these energy sanctions in November. So they'll probably behave for now. But sanctions enforcement is going to be really tough because most countries don't want to impose sanctions on Iran again. And they just have to look at North Korea and see that people are evading sanctions and getting away with it. When we talk about North Korea and Iran looking to see what's happening in that situation, do you get a sense that this maximum pressure campaign is wearing off? I think we are in a low pressure environment. On every metric, Iran is evading sanctions, imports, exports, financial transactions. And they know that their patrons, China and Russia, are going to carry their weight on the global stage and push back against additional sanctions. China and Russia are saying that we should ease sanctions on North Korea, despite the fact that they're engaging in bad behavior. So from Kim's perspective, it's kind of a wait and see game. Let's wait and see what happens with China and Russia's efforts to lobby for sanctions relief while they get revenue from sanctions evasion in the interim. Thank you so much, Sam Vinograd. So. Always such good information.